All right, well, today we're going to be doing an inspection at a client's uh, 2015 Phaeton from Tiffin. And now this is a pretty nice coach. It's in great shape, uh, 30,000 miles on it. And I know a lot of uh, my viewers asked me to do an inspection, not just on the roof, but do a, an inspection on the inside. I don't usually do that because it takes a long time to set up and do all the cam camera angles and editing. But I'm going to try this out for you guys because this should be a nice, easy coach to go through. Won't be too complicated. But I say that, it'll probably be pretty long. So whatever that number says, I'm not giving you a uh, place to skip through. You're going to have to watch the whole thing or find it yourself. I guess we'll go ahead and start inside. Let me see right here is the driver's seat. Might as well start at the beginning. So in the standard uh, inspection, you're just going to go ahead and basically test everything out. So wait for the wait to start light to go off. Let's settle down so we can get this thing out of the way. Wait to start lights out. So it looks like on the Phaeton, you don't get a smart wheel. But you do have your cruise control right there. You can see the cruise control is on. So if I turn that on and I hit the set button, it should go into high idle. Okay, so we have a warning light because our jacks are down. Let me just go ahead and store the jacks. Start right here, air horn. Turn the air horn on. That works. ICC flash, I'll check that with the uh, marker lights. All that means is that when I push that button, the mark, the marker lights on the, on the front cap and the rear cap flash. L for the left mirror. Up, down, left, right. R for the right mirror. Right, left, up, down. Some section should be manually aimed, but that's just mirror heat right there. Headlights, we'll go ahead and turn the headlights on. We'll push and hold that down. That should be the fog lights. And then the fog light light comes up. So now we can check that out. There's a weird switch right there. This is a wiper. To actually do the wipers, you move the knob in the middle. The outside knob, all that does is set the intermittent time. So you have intermittent, uh, slow, then high. Push on that to do the wash function. But they just washed this thing, so I'm not going to get water on there you know what I should probably push that just to make sure that ah, I saw it squirt just a little bit we're gonna call that good okay uh, move the pedals back and forward that works hazard lights pull out on that that activates the hazards and it's flashing right there just hit the turn signal to cancel the hazards I'll go ahead we're still in high idle so our air pressure is richer right there. They're built up. I just heard the uh, or the uh, tanks pop off. Let's see, right there's a dimmer. So I can adjust the dimmer. But I can deactivate the cruise control just like normal, or the uh, high idle just like cruise control if I hit the brake. That takes it off high idle. Or I can just go ahead and turn, turn it off there. All right, so your step cover. I know this one's a little bit slow, but I've seen a lot of these that just shoot out and take feet off. All right, well, that's out. Now I can put it back in. So I'm doing that driver fan. It's going to be this defroster fan right there. You have high and low. Uh, middle's going to be the off position. Now, their main posi purpose isn't actually to um, blow air on the driver or the passenger. It's just that the normal dash AC defroster, which comes out right down there on these great big windshields run out of steam about halfway so ideally these should actually be turned around and moving air around the windshield area but as long as they work they work solar shade should be this guy right there up and down for whatever reason this industry uses these things heavily and they always fail me so you need to get, learn how to uh, program these these are auto motion, auto motion shade. I'm just doing the uh, night shade. Otherwise, this is a privacy curtain. So it should be kind of relaxing right there. But I guess that's going to happen. There's a, uh, a snap-on cover to cover up that uh, side window. Generator, we can start and stop right here. Alright, well that's working. So that remote switch works. Map light should be the uh, driver's map light. Passenger has their own. Dock light, I'll leave that on. That's going to be for the outside 
we'll take a look at that and then the radio instead of working off the key ignition tiffin goes ahead and puts it on a dash switch right there now we might as well do that dash ac this runs off the engine to make cold air even though it's february it's pretty hot right now so to make cold air you have to turn the snowflake on this little button right there is going to be recirculate or max ac make sure that's all there it's pretty common on these knobs to be loose there's a little set screw underneath and that gets loose so always give those a little firm tug and make sure they're not uh loose and i can already feel cold air coming out so now we just need to make sure it works on all those fan speeds It's working on all fan speeds. I can actually hear the condenser fan running outside. So that's good. Try the uh, floor. Make sure it's coming out the floor. Coming out the floor there. And then try the froster. There we go. So that all worked. Fantastic. Camera's going to be right there. If I hit turn signal, left turn. There's left camera. Right camera. Comes up. Hey, look at the entry door. Uh, all right, the radio. All we really need to do is we can see the map works. So we go to menu, hit uh, oh, maybe that's ah, it's a source button right there. They just make these things so difficult. So we'll try that. All right, that works. Let me go get a CD. So I have all my test CDs, DVDs, whatever I can find. Usually, these get left in motorhomes and they donate them to me so you gotta have to be able to check all the DVD players we're not completely done with optical drives Ooh! all right so that works uh, before we do the jacks let's go ahead and check our lights so headlights are on fog lights are on I'm gonna turn the right turn signal on all right, these mirrors do have a turn signal light on them. So that one's working. Fog lights are working. Headlights working. Turn signal working. Same thing over here. Now these fog lights like to get cracked. So that one's cracked. I'll write it up. Uh, there's a little bit of a clear peeling on the headlight. I'll write that up too. And we'll look at the uh, marker lights up there. Those are all working. Now we turn the dock lights on. So we do have the dock lights on. There's two of them on each side on a Tiffin. So there we go. This should be turn signal when we have the drivers on. Dock light, turn signal. Dock light. Let's go around, turn signal the other way to the driver's side and turn the high beams on. So the high beams are going to be on this switch too. Now we got the blue light there. That should have turned the fog lights off. All right, high beams are on. High beams are on, turn signals on, flashers on. So there we go, there's that flashing light we were talking about. Those are working. All right, I think one of these is out. I'll write that up too. First part is if you have somebody, a second person, you can check these lights a lot faster than you can by yourself. So last thing I need to do is hit the brake pedal, which of course I can't hit the brake pedal by myself. Which of course I can't hit the brake pedal by myself and check it. Sometimes you can check it in the backup cameras, but I don't have a wall to check it on. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the park brake or the brake on with the seat. Turn that off, turn that off, and we'll go look. All right, that's on. And that's on. I didn't check the license plate light. It works. Brake light works. Turn the dock lights off there, turn the radio off. Oh, I need, my, I need my CD back. It's dangerous to use good CDs because a lot of these radios, once you take the, put a CD in there, they take them, they don't take them back because nobody uses them anymore. 
Right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, level the motorhome. Now this has hydraulic HWH leveling, with, uh, and this has air suspension. So the first thing we have to do is come off the air suspension and then uh, the jacks will come down. So these indicate the low side of the motorhome, which seems about right based on how I'm sitting. Uh, all I have to do is hit that button once. The blue light will come on, we'll come off the airbags, and then the jacks will come down. And there's the hydraulic pump for the jacks. Take a look right. <laughs> Make sure the jacks are coming down. Looks like it's lowering the driver's side first. Now, I don't think this is going to level because this ground is very sloped. So I brought the front up. Oh, wait, we are going to level. So now it's just going to bring uh, the rear jacks down until it's out. Touches. Nice, we did level. All right, look at the blue light stop. We're good. Now I can go ahead and turn that off. So I really wish that was it. The driver's seat got a lot going on with it. We have to make sure. Seat goes forward, backwards, up, down, tilt, tilt, and tilt, tilt. Kind of right there. So I'm gonna make sure it goes back. Make sure it comes back up. On this side, there's gonna be a little paddle. Make sure that it swivels and then locks forward. It should only lock forward in the for it should lock forward when you're in the forward position. That's the only place it should really lock. That's a safety feature. And of course, we still have the armrest. Now, these have adjustable armrests, so push those buttons to make sure. Passenger side, or the other side, exact same. My last most important switch, uh, check is going to be the seatbelt. Seems stupid, but you don't want to be blamed for not checking the seatbelt. Make sure it worked. There have been a few times where seatbelts have been removed, and if I didn't notate it, it'd be pretty easy to say I didn't do an inspection. My pin just ran out. All right, I say in op a lot because I get sick of writing in operative. It's my personal opinion. When doing an inspection, you write down anything that you didn't find, get to work or couldn't get to work. If you get to work later, just cross it out. If you did, still didn't get to work, at least uh, it's notated. If it's there's something you were doing wrong and there was nothing wrong with it, that's fine. That's the best case scenario. Uh, if you don't notate it because you think, yeah, it'll probably work and it doesn't work, that's going to be on you. So I try to notate anything that's not, I can't get to work. Uh, if I get to work, I'll cross it out. Then it makes you actually look like you're doing something. We didn't try out these uh, roller shades here. Again, these don't like to stay working for some reason too. I'm gonna go ahead and check the driver, uh, passenger seat out the exact same way as the driver's seat. Pretty straightforward. The only difference on a passenger seat is usually you have a uh, power footrest so that's working be surprised how many times that doesn't work either we got a uh, make sure that works and there is an outlet down here and we got power over here there's more shades check out both shades always want to check both shades always check the uh the balance is around shades because those like to get loose because they're only held by screws. Look through all the windows because you'll get a lot of moisture in the windows. Now, these uh, windows, it's my honest opinion because I've been locked out of these things too many times is to leave at least one window unlocked. Sounds bad, but it's saved me more than once. So I can't check the seat belt because it's not hooked up. So let me go ahead and hook it up. Now, Tiffin uses two buckles, and this can confuse people sometimes, because only one of the buckles will fit in the right spot. So this is what's actually going down to the uh, the lap belt. This one right here needs to come up to that. Well, wouldn't you know it? The seat belt stuck. Wonderful. So, it's a good thing we checked the seat belts, right? All right.
step cover switch again. Make sure the step cover that works. Passenger fan on off. Okay, uh, panel lights. That's just gonna be all these back lights. So that turns on and off right there. And the map light for the passenger is right there. Okay. Last things to do here. Now I've already notated that the entry step doesn't work. Looks like the motor seized up from lack of use. Floor light. It's gonna be those step floor lights right there. There's your basically your motorhome on off switch. That'll turn the batteries on or off. I just turned them off. I guess I should read. That's the on position. So that works. Porch light. On Tiffin, they have a porch light. That's usually on the slide out. It's a bigger light. And then they have a door light right above the door. Ceiling light. Okay, there's the ceiling light. Road light's going to be a utility light on the driver's side. Cargo light's your basement light. Those have to be on. And the assist handle is going to be right here. It should be on. And that's off. I did see it. It's very hard to see in the full sun. Uh, so we have a door light, which is right there. And then the porch light, which is right there. And that's not working. The road light. It's right there. And that one's working. Okay. So that was just... All right, so that was just the cab area. All we did was really push buttons and switches and notate things that didn't work. Uh, it takes a surprising amount of time just to do that. Uh, that's why I don't like to do these. Uh, that's why I haven't recorded one of these. It's it's a lot to go through. So on Tiffin, right above the driver's seat is going to be all the controls. Now, I've already ran out the front slide outs. That's going to be the front slide outs. And, of course, right here is going to be the inverter controls. Uh, right now, if I hit inverter... The inverter light is on, so it's in standby mode, but we are charging because we're plugged in. And we're in a medium or absorption charge. This one does have an AGS. So right now it's off. Uh, right here's going to be the entry door awning. I already have that one in and out. It's going to be right there. Go ahead and run that in. Satellite dish. Really not too much to do on that, just other, otherwise hear it turn on. Uh, on an inspection, I don't guarantee testing out satellite dishes because you need to make sure you have the right equipment and the right subscription service. And uh, satellite systems go obsolete pretty quick. And I'm not going to stand behind an obsolete system. Uh, if I know they're obsolete or I don't think they're going to work, I will make a note of it. But it's always been my rule of thumb that I don't truly test satellite systems for operation just because it could either be Dish Network it works on, DirecTV it works on, or uh, Shaw Direct. That's at least three different ones. And I don't want to say it works and then have uh, an owner say, well, it doesn't work on my service and have to troubleshoot it. Because the satellite systems, uh, setting up the correct satellite system could take the better part of half a day. Not an on inspection. Just make sure everything's there and hooked up or not damaged. That's about all I'm going to guarantee on a satellite system. That being said, on the WineGuard Travelers, you can turn those on and power the whole thing up. It, it should find the satellite just fine. I will check that because it's effortless and they don't need a receiver for that. And that would be important to know that at least that operates. Sometimes I'll notate what kind of system it is because they are not interchangeable. Okay, right here's the monitor panel. So we can check our levels right there. Our battery voltages, that's just our main, so it should be pretty close to what we're reading. Just taken from a different spot. Now, this is a tankless water heater. We'll take a look at it on the outside. That just has to be on for that to work. And, of course, this is the main patio awning. Just turn it on and hit extend. And it's going to come out right there. The last point of note on this, my own opinion... Uh, there's two rule of thumbs with the monitor panel. Obviously, you can fill up the fresh water tank and make sure that fills up all the way and the sensors read correctly. On the waste tanks, uh, it is standard procedure to fill up the tanks, both gray and black, to make sure there are no leaks and that the sensors work. Uh, I have two thoughts on this. One, I've overfilled the black tank too many times and caused more damage from overfilling the black tank because I get preoccupied doing other things. Uh, 
lots of time inspection there there won't be water available at an inspection site to fill those up uh, so if you want your holding tanks and uh, filled completely it's pretty important that you let the uh, inspector know or that they that you do request that I'm also in the desert so it really irritates me to waste a hundred gallons of water just to fill up a tank and then empty it again so I'm gonna go ahead and retract the awning now on this one you just have to hold it for a little bit once it gets going it'll close itself it's always important to open and close each cabinet door make sure the latches are latching the doors aren't gonna fall off a lot of times they'll be loose it seems like a pointless exercise but it's pretty important you know on this uh, TV antenna you have your antenna booster right there and this one uh, is a stationary unit on the on the roof so oh here's that a uh, snap-on cover for that window that's why I always have my polarity tester check each outlet for power green means good uh, touch up paint and traditionally this would have been the DVD compartment or the DVD player home theater system but Tiffin finally moved it out of this small compartment which makes me very happy okay well that was just the driver's compartment there's a lot to do here but hopefully the rest will go a little bit faster but I know it won't. Right, here's where the smoke detector. You should always check that. Make sure the battery works. Uh, LP and CO detectors have about a five year lifespan. So after past five years, you should always recommend replacing them. Uh, even if the customer doesn't do it, at least you recommended it and it's on them. So on this one, the LP detector and CO detector are probably built in together. And the only real way to know would be to take it out. So we'll have to pull this out and check the date on the back. Now, usually, unless uh, it's being sold by a dealer, most people don't go ahead and replace these. So it's always important to check. So it's got a manufacture date of 2015. It's 2021. So it's six years old. We'd recommend a new one. All right, I made my, my note there. I'm going to keep moving. So what I will do is take you through this side. Again, we're just going to check all the doors. Look inside. It's important to look at on the other side of these cabinets. A lot of times this paneling gets loose. Check the shades. Oh, no. Alright, cool. This one has a full chains on it. The ones that always work. I've never had a problem with the shades with pull chains. Right here. I mean, they're definitely more difficult to use. But they do work. Open and close the window. Look for fogginess. And last thing, grab each valance. Make sure they don't rattle. These will have on-off switches there. Make sure that light works. Back over to here, over to there. It's just a tie. Looks to me, I think those are like heater vents for the furnace. That's pretty cool. We got a galley pull out, unlock it. Oh, look at that. See? It's bent and loose. So yeah, it's been a problem. We need to make a note of that. That's the emergency. All right, so close that back up. Now, probably the most important uh, tool that a inspector is going to have is going to be a flashlight. Home inspectors will always have a flashlight. You always want to look back into little crevices, look for any water damage, critter damage, anything obvious. Make sure all these drawers work. Here. Ooh, look at that. We got pull out some here. Oh, is that gonna set soft close? Neat. Down here again. Another pull out. Make sure the drawers aren't loose. Alright, so I'm gonna guess there was a dishwasher here at some point. So somebody's removed the dishwasher. You can see that drain line right there. I'm not sure the bolt's the best fix, but it does work. 
You always want to check all your uh, drain nuts. Make sure they're not loose. And then check the plumbing. Make sure there's no signs of leaking on it. There's a little bit of sign, but nothing I'd be that concerned about. Alright, don't see anything there. Now, what I like to do is pull out all the drawers. Okay, so it's a wire. I'm not sure what that wire goes to. Alright, anyway, what I like to do is pull out the drawers and you can use your flashlight to look behind. Pull all the drawers out of the way and make sure you don't see anything bad. I don't see anything bad. <clears throat> Same with right over here with the slide, because this is a slide out right over here. I want to make sure they don't have any drains leaking. How those light switches work, we turn the water pump on. That'll take us down to here. Now, they've added these window covers, so I can't see if they're foggy. Those are just stickers. But we still want to grab that. We'll grab this. Man, we got pullouts everywhere. It's not a bad idea to check the fascias, make sure they're not loose. So, well, it's maybe a little loose, but nothing bad. That backsplash seems pretty loose. Alright, so we'll write that up. Okay. Get our seam covers out of the way. Look for any gaps along the sealant right there. Sometimes the sinks fall down. And it should have the water heater on so you can check it for hot water coming out of the, each faucet. You do want to check for hot water at each faucet. I've seen too many times where uh, you'll have water flow but not hot water. Or it'll be, always be hot water, not any cold water. So it's already getting hot. That's cold. These soap uh, dispensers are notorious for being loose and getting broken. That'll bring us to the stove. Oh, cool. That's a bifold one. That's pretty good. So the propane is on. Put it on light. Rotate that. So it does light. We do need to do an LP leak test because this one does have propane. So I'll show you how to do that. Right here, I'll check that there, and then we'll hit the GFI tester, make sure it pops, which it did. Now we just have to find which GFI and where it's at. So always the mystery. Use this one. Alright. Right, I'm gonna go turn the propane off. We'll do an LP leak test real fast. Alright, so the first thing we'll do is turn the propane off. All the way. Now, this is probably the only part of a, an inspection on an RV that really makes an RV tech an RV tech and not just a home inspector or a mechanic. Nice is that this one already has a stove top that I can tap into. Let's move that out of the way. Also, it's important to look for these grommets. A lot of times these stove grates are missing the grommets and if they're gone, it makes it unsafe to cook on because the grate's loose. It looks like this wire probably needs to be replaced. It maybe got melted a few times. So I'll make a note of that. So with these, I can hook up my manometer pretty easily. All you have to do is basically move a burner out of the way. So now I've exposed that orifice on that manifold. Got my little cup and I put it over there. Now we need to turn it on. So now we have pressure. This one's reading about 10 and a half inches of water column. That's not a true reading because this is regulated. So we're not going to use that for true pressure reading of the system. We'd have to go on the other side of that system using a tap. If you don't have a stove top like this, you can do that. You still have, you'll have to disconnect that and use that. I have one. It looks like this, just a little adapter. You just connect that right there, put that right there. And now you can put your uh, manometer hook up to there. With that, you can actually check the pressure. But I don't really care about the pressure. I just want to make sure there's not a leak. So to check for a leak, we pressurized the entire propane system. So we, like we inflated the balloon and we hooked up to here. We left this connection, this valve open so we can see that the system is pressurized. Turned off the propane. And now what we're going to do is open up another burner to bleed off the pressure. You know? All 
that right. So we brought that down, that needle dropped, crept up a little bit. We'll beat off a little bit more pressure. All right, so we're about eight inches of water column right there. Water column is going to be the middle gauge right there. So now, theoretically, every regulator in the system should be open and not locked off because we don't want to make sure that this regulator wasn't closed off and we weren't testing the LP from after this point. We want to make sure we're testing it all the way to here. Same with uh, a lot of furnaces and other appliances will still have a, a regulator. And so we want to make sure that those regulators are open too. And we're checking the entire system. So now with that turned off, propane turned off, that we leave this valve open. All we do is check our time. We want this to hold for at least three minutes, so we don't want that needle to fall. If that needle falls, that means we're losing pressure. And if we're losing pressure, that means we have an LP leak somewhere in the system. So this is, like I said, the only important test for the most part for an RV with propane. So while we're doing that, we'll go ahead. A lot of times these microwaves get loose. So you want to make sure that the bolts holding them on aren't loose. Uh, it's that clock. I hate this. Like I said, okay, now I should be able to turn the work light on. All right. Bit, man. All right. There's also a convection oven, but... There's no reason to do this right now. We just want to make sure that it at least does something. So. And it looks like it powered up. So I'll just go ahead and stop that. Now with this LP leak test, uh, I think the industry standard is at least three minutes. A lot of dealerships will require at least 15 minutes. That way that's not, they exceed the standard basically. Right here is going to be the fantastic vent control. All we're going to do is raise it. And the fan works. Let me turn the fan off. I can lower it. All right, as we wait for our clock to clock down. Uh, on these roof ACs, these are the, where the cold air comes out. And this is where the uh, return air goes back. And you can see these filters are dirty. So I think all these filters would need to be uh, serviced. Or to do it, it's pretty simple. You just pull down on that. Take this uh, filter off and clean it underwater. So we'll add that to our list of things. Now what I generally like to do before I even really get too deep into these things is start a dishwasher cycle. There's no dishwasher, so I don't have to worry about that. But I do like to start a wash cycle because a wash cycle can take a while. So there's no reason to wait for that. The dryer is working. And yes, they are that loud. All right, so let me go ahead and turn this one on. I'm just going to do a, uh, a rinse number A, A, and then I just hit, close that, and hit start. All I really want to do is make sure that it fills up, starts rinsing, and then I'll turn it off and go to uh, drain and drain it out. But I don't want to wait 30 minutes to find out. So this sofa, we'll inspect the fabric, make sure nothing looks bad, no seams popping. Check this balance over here, or the fascia right there. Fascia is good. We got a little cubby hole right there. And this is probably gonna be a height of bed. It's always good form to check the height of bed. This is gonna be an air bed. I have to plug it in. Well, that was the closest outlet they gave me. That's surprising. I thought there'd be one underneath. All I do is inflate. Stop it, then you would deflate it. Go ahead and look at the uh, mattress, make sure there's no staining, no grossness, and just put it away. Now, this will not fold away unless the air bed or the, the air bed isn't deflated. All right, so that's put away. So it's definitely been five minutes now. And our needle didn't move, so we passed our LP test. I'm going to turn the propane back on, and we can try everything else out. The washer should be running. Let's go ahead and pause it. We'll put it on drain. Let's see. And hopefully hit start. 
Now it's not flickering like that. That's just the LED nuts. All right, make sure it goes through that cycle. So we're what, like two hours into this thing it feels like, and we've only done the driver's area and the passenger area. All right, so with the TV, I like to turn the TV on before I check any of the anything else out. So that is working. Uh, let's see. Right, so I don't need to do a channel search because I can already test the antenna right here. So I'm going to go to input and hopefully go to DVD and we'll find the DVD player. All right, so all these work. I don't see an issue. I mean, that guy's a little loose, but that's just cosmetic. Now, one thing you might notice on a lot of RVs is that the wallpaper will get loose, bubbled, especially around contact points. It's not too much you can do about that. That's just a natural thing that happens with heat and plastic and adhesives. That's pretty cool. Got to flip up a little. Oh, it goes back in. <laughs> no, it's not that cool. Now, I would have thought that was like rot, rat droppings, but that's just like dog food or cat food. So it's also part of the inspection. You want to make sure that there's not any signs of rodent infestation. We got a fireplace right there. You turn that on. Make sure the space heater works. Yeah, it's working. This one also has a remote. This is a strange setup. I can't believe this came from the factory like this. I don't know if somebody made it. But it's pretty impressive. If it's not factory, it sure looks like it. I think somebody made this and they did a fantastic job matching the factory. That's a pretty expensive cabinet somebody had made. Man, they even lined the inside of it with Corian. I don't know. What do you think they used this for? Hmm. Again, we have check for power. This table should pull out on a Tiffin. Just pulls out, goes back in. These Tiffin chairs, I mean, they're kind of just chairs, but it's important to sit on them and wiggle them because a lot of times these things are almost falling apart. They're just chairs, so they're, you can replace them. There's no reason to keep a factory chair that's falling apart. But you don't want to say it was safe when it wasn't safe. All right. Subwoofers down there. A little printer place right there. Another one to outlet down there. Right. One to outlet right there. That's almost impossible to get to because this balance is in the way. This balance. That's why we test them. So I got a loose valance. All the other lights are working. This valance is good. That shade works. And I don't see any cloudiness there. The latch works. Window opens and closes. Alright, so this is an emergency window. So we need to try that one first. And then these two red handles, we lift up on those. And we should be able to push it out. If it hasn't been open for a long time, it'll be stuck. Just keep gingerly trying to pry until it finally gives way. Okay. So we're making great progress there. I think, if I remember Tiffin, they put their DVD player here. Because why wouldn't you, right? Turn that on. Open that. The last frustrating thing that not many people know about is uh, now this is a DVD home theater, so this is where your uh, home theater surround is going to go. But uh, the thing is, blu they don't make Blu ray or DVD home theater systems anymore. So if this goes bad, you have to get a standalone uh, home theater system, hook up to the speakers, and then a, a separate DVD player. So that can be quite frustrating. Push. Play. All right. 
better turn the volume down before I get hit with anything, so. So that's working. Leave that in there and chest it on the other TVs. Right here's gonna be the front thermostat. Put that in cool mode. I like to check each th uh, AC at one at a time because you don't want to try to all three of it at the same time. There's three of them on this one. There could be four, but you want to make sure you test each one to make sure it's blowing cold and blowing air. So I just have that on. Cool. All right, that's going. Turn the propane back on. All right. All right. Feels pretty cold to me. And then with the propane back on, you can see we, our pressure went back up again. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off, disconnect that, and then put my stove back together. All right, that's back together. Let me fold that down. Get that out of the way. Okay. Now the AC is blowing nice and cold. I can try it in low speed, make sure the fan works in low. Still works in low. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move it to gas heat. Set the temperature up. Now the nice thing about this coach is that they have three different thermostats for each zone. So I don't have to worry about heating one zone and cooling the other one. So I can heat one zone, go to the next one, and try that thermostat. So I'm going to put this one in cool and set the temperature down. See, it's a balmy 80 degrees in here right now. Right, the rest of the country is freezing. All right, so there's a furnace just turned on. The hot air is going to come out right there. I got cold air coming out right there. I don't know. Let's see. There's only going to be two furnaces on here, so one of these thermostats won't have any gas heat. I will assume that the bathroom one won't work. But we'll find out. Okay, I'll put this one on cool. Set our temperature there. Oh, yeah, nice and hot right there. So with that tested out, we're good. Now the thermostat is loose, but that's nothing to concern to concern us. Electric heat, that's gonna be the roof AC in uh, heat pump mode. So you just bring it to electric heat and set the temperature you want. And here's gonna be our residential refrigerator. I did hear it make ice already. So yeah, we got ice. That's good. Looks like that's cracked and broken. For whatever reason, these things get beat up in these RVs. Make a note of that. This refrigerator door wasn't closing because this alcohol latch is not. Oh, it's broken. All right, so write that one up. This alcohol latch is broken. All right. For whatever reason, also these freezer drawer rails always get rusty. It's usually because uh, people leave these things uh, in storage with them frozen and they don't open them to dry it to let dry out so the moisture gets stuck in there and rust everything. I always want to hear for the auger to work. You'd be surprised how many times the ice auger doesn't work. Try the water, make sure the water works, which it does. You'd be surprised how many times water, the water valves go bad on those too. All right, so I can. Feel the heat, so the furnace is working. Oh yeah, I'm gonna turn the furnace off. So that's gas heat, turn that off. And yeah, the AC's working great. So that's working. And our washer stopped. We're getting close to being done with all the difficult stuff. Let's go in the bathroom. Now there's a mid-coach bath. It's got a water pump you can turn on and off right there. Another fan. And again, a lot of this is just visual, visual inspection and making sure all the buttons actually work. So this trim, maybe it's a little loose. This wall panel is definitely loose, but that's pretty common. I mean, I'll make a note of it. Hello, James. Water. All right, so hot water. 
Well, this has a tankless water heater, so it has to sense that it's moving some water. Well, this is actually a pretty rare floor plan to get the half bath on this side. It's not very common on the driver's side. Let's see. Again, we're going to check right here. And a lot of times these uh, nylon nuts on those uh, sink connections get broken. And I don't see any obvious leaks so if we come down here i mean i know you can see it sweating right there but i don't see anything correlated down in here get a look down in there for anything we can see all right so this is going to be a gravity toilet right here got the one pedal push down on it make sure it flushes let go make sure it turns off Try the sprayer without the pedal. Try the sprayer with the pedal. Try the uh, outlet again. Even though we already tried this. GFI protection, we're good there. Reset it. And the privacy decal on this window. Okay. And that was a half bath. While I'm walking around too, I'm always looking at the cabinetry. I'm always looking at the floor for any damages, any uh, obvious breakage. Uh, the carpet, make sure it's not damaged or torn. Let me make a note of the few things that I found in the bathroom. All these uh, trips back and forth. All right, we got a pocket door right there. Check the travel lock, make sure it works. As silly as it sounds, you wanna make sure that that actually does engage. does with a little bit of assistant with my foot but as long as it works and everything's there we're gonna call that fine see right down here is gonna be a, what our central vacuum cleaner so I'll find the uh, attachment so we can plug that in all right so right in here check the power there now this should not be in a GFI so we don't have to worry about that Oh, there's that remote eye. So it just picks it up and retransmits it over the eye right there. This should be the night. Open that window. Red handles, emergency exit again. That works. The hamper, and now with the hamper open, we'll get our flashlight and look behind there. There's somebody left though. Cloth back there. All oh, that wiring. You always hope to find a stash of hundred dollar bills, but you never find it. You always find like socks. It's never quite as good as a uh, stash of hundred dollar bills. But then I always assume that if there's, there's something valuable in there, somebody left it as a. Uh, as a test to see if I was honest. So I don't, I, I'm glad I haven't found anything because I don't know if I would make the right decision if I found uh, a bag full of hundred dollar bills. Okay, let me go ahead and close this. Okay, we're gonna look and make sure nothing's loose on the wall. Let me grab the remote control. Turn this TV on. All right, over here, antenna's just fine. We'll hit the input button, and we'll go to DVD. And hopefully, the DVD player comes up. There it is. So under the bed, there's usually storage on Tiffin under the bed. There's the folding chairs. Looks like there's gonna be an air mattress. Yep, so I'll we'll have to look for the control for the air mattress. And we're good there. Try the window out. Uh, up and down. Nightshade or day shade, and now the nightshade. Good there. And now we have to find a switch for that light. That light works. The balance isn't loose. I think this is the bed control. See if I lose. Oops. All right, I got a sinking feeling that's working. All right, 
this side. Can't look in the cabinets. Make sure nothing's loose. Make sure those aren't loose. Always keep a keen eye out for bubbling in wallpaper. Bubbling in wallpaper means there's usually water behind it. You know, eventually I'm going to get these right. See any signs of clouding in that? Oh, and that works. Good, 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 good. I can close that back up. Check for power there. Check for a... Hmm. Oh, those are headphones. Somebody left their headphones here. There's the bed control. Let's see if it works. There we go. Now this is for the ceiling fan. You have off as the middle. You have high and low. Those two dots. Now these are 12 volt little ceiling fans and they're kind of noisy. They squeak a lot. They always do that. They're very good. These speakers back here should be coming from the dash radio. All right, I can hear it back here. We're almost to the end. Should probably turn that off. Oh, I definitely turn that off. And there's that little transmitter. Picks up the signal here, retransmits it right there. Okay, now I can turn the TV off. Last few tests right here. Get another pocket door. Make sure that works. Uh, yeah, you can see a little bit of wrinkling right there. That's normal. Should be usually wrinkling around the windows. That's going to be normal. Yeah, we want. Okay. So I already know we already checked the washer and dryer in here. Light switch works. Now this little guy right there. Now this is uh, C. That's uh, Shower Enclosures of America. If you break this thing, you just contact them. They'll send you a new one. But yeah, these doors are kind of frustrating. Yeah, I want to make sure we have hot water. We need hot water. It should be a lot closer. The water heater's right there. Make sure the water drains. I got hot water and I got cold water. Now I got no water. That's pretty good off a sure flow water pump. Look in here for any water leak signs. I am always looking at the ceiling too. It's a nice little feature that Tiffin gives you. haven't found yet is going to be the electrical center where the uh, breakers are. Hopefully we'll find it back here. Isn't that pretty? It's a nice way to pick up too. Now this is going to be a macerating toilet. All right. It's beating a dead horse, but do not use anything other than RV toilet paper down here. So you can add water right there. And I can flush right there. Oh, so unsatisfying. Uh, this little green light there means that the black tank is not too full to flush. It'll change colors if it's too full. There's a little bit of a crack right there in that wood. This is solid wood and it's a very weak point because there's a big hole cut into there. So normal expansion contraction of normal wood, you're going to crack. Not too many ways around it. And that one's working. Go ahead and close that off. Okay. Engine access, we won't worry about looking under there. Now we have another thing that should be GFI. And look at that, GFI outlet right there. It's pretty right here. We like cut out 
branches in that corian. That's pretty. Looks good. We want for hot. There we got hot. Now we got cold. It's not loose. Look underneath here. No signs of anything bad under here. Another hamper. I don't know what those are. I don't know what that is. Look down in there. No hundred dollar bills. It's always good to slam them. That way you can hear if the latches are latching. That's how you find broken latches. This has two latches. Inspect those. A little light right there. Morse code it. All right, and got this last way. Look at that! I found the electrical center. One ten breakers located right there. Twelve volt circuit breakers, and they're labeled right there. Now this light didn't turn on. Great! I found something wrong. Light switch. Turn the water pump on and off. That's good sounds. So believe it or not, we're done with this inside inspection. I'll go through and look at the ceiling, look for any damages, and then I'm going to go outside. Now, I won't lie to you guys. I am definitely something of a uh, Tiffin fanboy. I really like Tiffin. Not because just because they're built pretty well, uh, and not because their styling, they're, they have very great styling cues. Uh, and good floor plans, but mostly because they improve their product every year. You, as a technician, you can see what did work, what didn't work, and they said, well, that didn't work. We'll try something else, or uh, let's go ahead and try this method be, and try to make a better product. So they're always trying to make a better product, so I always appreciate that. Of course, time will tell if the uh, Thor purchase is going to keep that uh, true or not. Work so we go to menu, hit uh, oh, maybe that's where we want to go. Function, no, 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 let's get out of there and go to uh, AV. Ah, 